Hey friends, David Miller. Welcome to my studio, Primordial Creative. I want to talk about autobiography as an art form. Obviously, autobiography has been big in anything that's like a written form for a long period of time. People uh, collect their memoirs at different sections of their life. They look back, they try and make a narrative through this random mess that is our life. Biographies are so interesting to me. Most of the books I read are biographies. Uh, if I'm thinking of musical autobiographies I've read in you know, the last 20 years. Ice-T, Daniel Lanois, Johnny Cash. And I feel like I learn more from the real life trials and tribulations of people than I do from some sort of fictionalized thing. I mean, I, I grew up liking Star Trek The Next Generation and the ethical and moral quandaries they found themselves in, but you know, those are fictional characters. All the comic book characters are fictional characters, so you can write them out of the hard choices we have to make in real life. Um, and uh, besides autobiographies as books, uh, I have been working on my own autobiographic comic, and I find the comic is an excellent form for autobiographic exploration. Unlike photography, where I can't time travel in the past, and take pictures of myself or people in my life, you know? Um, I have photos of my personal life starting around the time I got into photography, 1997. And even at a certain point that stops because I shifted uh, most of the time I went around with the camera, not to the moments that I'm documenting, but moments that I'm creating with art models or, you know, specified trips to destinations where I did photography. Uh, if you're drawing your life story, you can say, oh yeah, I remember when I was age five and I was standing between my parents fighting. I remember jumping on the bed at age three. I remember when I hit some firecrackers with a hammer and, you know, pop my eardrums and things like that. Like no one was there with a the camera. I certainly wasn't making art at the time, but I can reach back, think about those things, insert them into stories. Also autobiographical comics, uh, as a form, they aren't as old as a lot of other uh, comic forms. Most of the comics were fictional narratives, and then it kind of expanded into reprinting classical literature and uh, and occasionally, like you know, documenting historical things in comic book narrative form. But uh, the autobiographical comic sort of came out of the zine culture. And of course, uh, people are generally familiar with Harvey Picar and American Splendor because there was a movie about it. Um, but Harvey was you know, a very unassuming man who just made comics about his life. He wrangled in other artists to help him out. He went on Dave Letterman and was very entertaining. Uh, Alan Moore, one of the great writers, if not the greatest writer of the comics medium of all time, has this to say about Harvey Picar. Talking about Harvey's work and how I relate to it, any particular story that struck me specifically. I mean, so much of what Harvey did was incredible. From back in the American Splendor days, there's always one piece which uh, I particularly remember. It had just got Harvey on a hot day going into the kitchen and he gets one of those little metallic sachet things um, of lemon concentrate, lemonade concentrate, squeezes it into a glass, turns on the tap and you can see the water splashing down into the glass and filling it up and then he stirs it and then it's just got a shot of him drinking a cold glass of lemonade on a hot day and it really evokes how good that feels such a simple human action and he was able to get it down with no words and a few pictures so that any human being in the western world and probably far beyond could look at it and relate to it and think yeah that is what being human is all about. Drinking cold lemonade on a very hot day. He was at the very start of the autobiographical comics uh, process, which has spawned such fantastic fruit. I mean, I think that probably the most interesting thing happening in comics is probably autobiographical pieces. And Harvey was right at the start of that. I'm really interested in reading about autobiographical stuff because, again, the trials and tribulations of regular people over fictional characters who are wondering how they get their powers back if they lost their powers, or you know how do you defeat this 
supervillain, this adversary. Um, how do you deal with losing your sight? And how do you deal with the different reactions of other people, how they treat you when you're blind? You know, this is something that uh, Vivian Chong, writer, explored in Dancing After 10. How do you deal with how, how do you deal with uh, heartbreak when you've been in love and you've lost that love and you've got to get it out? Like, you just need to express those feelings so they don't chew you up inside. You make comics about it. Now, some of these things are going back to like the 80s and the 90s. Uh, autobiographical comics have exploded since then. I go to my local public library and I just see rows and rows of autobiographical comics. And I think the reason why they've exploded in the recent years is because what people got out of comics for so long, the ability to have like totally cosmic, psychedelic visuals and dinosaurs and whatever, that used to not be represented on film very well, but now it is. Now I have a choice between an Avengers comic and an Avengers film, and that two hours I spend with the Avengers film is likely a lot more satisfying and, you know, as equally epic in scope as what was on the comics page. Whereas if you went to like, I don't know, the old X-Men film, the 90s Batman films, like they did not satisfy as much as the original source material did. And same with video games, you know, you could play a game and be Spider-Man, you could see awesome Spider-Man movies, or you could read a comic about Spider-Man. Of those three choices, one of those actually lets you be Spider-Man and swing around and, uh, you know, fight as villains. The idea that you would get your fix, I could only get this feeling, this vibe from the comic book is not reality anymore. You can get the same fantasy heroic fix in other media, but I'm not gonna be able to see the story of Ed Brubaker as a young lowlife, you know, as somebody who was a shoplifter and a drug addict. That stuff is so interesting. I don't get to see uh, Chester Brown or Dave Cooper's, uh, you know, lives on the screen and their innermost thoughts and you know even things that would be considered deeply shameful that you get from reading their comics. And uh, even though a lot of the autobiographical writers aren't always the artists of their comics, I find the most satisfying ones are because that's when you get to see a person portraying themselves as they see themselves. And sometimes that's not in a great light. You know, Daniel Clow's comic, My Suicide, uh, Robert Crumb, when he portrays himself, he doesn't look, portray himself as, as like a strapping heroic dude. Uh, I find that very brave and it isn't all about navel gazing. It definitely is um, how artists can take that sort of primordial mess of their life and reinterpret it that I find most fascinating. You don't get a lot of that in photography. Um, certainly there are photographers who do self portraits of themselves and certainly there are photographers who showcase their, you know, real life. Uh, Larry Clark and the kids series, most of which I can't show on this channel, but you can look it up yourself. Um, his friends were drug addicts. They were uh, promiscuous and he photographed a lot of that. Uh, a lot of photographers who do the self portraits do so with like a particular emotive state. And uh, more to the point, a lot of still photography is not in a narrative form until a long period of time. And I don't think it's an ideal way to showcase um, an autobiographical work. In movies, autobiographical works are kind of limited if we're saying like Howard Stern plays himself in the movie about Howard Stern based on the book that he wrote. That's kind of a unique thing. A lot of the biopics, they just pick and choose and cut things down to two hours and you know, a movie like A Beautiful Mind, which isn't an autobiographical film, but it's a biographical film for that particular person that Russell Crowe plays. Um, I know in real life, there's moments they took out because 
it was just too odd to have, you know, their main character uh, hit on other guys in the bathroom or something like that. I think that's something that was left out of that screenplay. Um, many biopics frame a narrative where Johnny Cash's first wife is now a shrew, when maybe she wasn't in real life, you know, because it made it easier to swallow that he left her for another woman. Yeah, autobiographical comics. I showcase a lot of my favorites in this episode and working on my own. You know, if you are somebody out there who's working on your own autobiographical comic, I'm really excited to see what some like up and comer people are coming up with, you know? I mean, it's a huge gamut. It could be Raina Talgemeier talking about getting braces versus uh, people's dark and weird and uh, wholly human obsessions, addictions, uh, shameful moments of their life. That stuff is fascinating. It's important, I think, that we share our lives with each other because this is when you find out you're not alone. You have, <clears throat> this is where you find out as uh, a spectator to their lives that, oh, they felt and thought and went through similar things that I did. Or in the case of Vivian Chong, she felt and went through things that I'm unlikely to ever experience in my life, but now I know what it's like to gain a disability at a certain period of life so randomly through um, ibuprofen, I believe, is what made her go blind. And then to see how poorly people treat you, you know, they think they're joking, they think they're helping you out, and they are not. <laughs> so if you are an autobiographical comic maker, drop your links in the comments below. Feel free to check out my own stuff at the links below and I will talk to you next time.